Hey Gamers, this is a compilation video of my reviews of the 2024 Nintendo Directs plus the Indie World Showcase thing and Sonic Movie 3 trailer because that was one big video where a lot of news happened in a single day. So consider those as bonuses, I guess. Uh, Timestamps will be in the description below as always. Uh, these videos are cleaned up a little bit remastered you could say such as some new edits here and there especially for cutting out the intros and outros for these videos and also um the first video has new background footage so there you go but anyway there's more than enough rambling let's just get right into the video shall we the first announcement in the direct uh partner showcase thing was grounded coming over to switch which uh, isn't too surprising, though uh, this wasn't in the direct, but they did officially announce all the four games that are coming to Switch and PlayStation. But here's the weird thing. Uh, Grounded is coming for all platforms. Uh, sea of Thieves is coming out for PS5 only, uh, along with Hi-Fi Rush. I would have thought Hi-Fi Rush would have been coming out to Switch because it was data mined with the thing. Um, now I did hear some rumors, again, I don't care about rumors, I really hate them, but I did hear some rumors that, you know, apparently, uh, the Switch version got cancelled. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Switch 2 version coming out eventually, but for now, yeah, I, I, sadly, it's not coming to Switch. And I think it could run on Switch, but it's not even coming out to PS4, so, uh, yeah, so, and then Pentiment was also here in the direct, but later on I'll talk about, but I don't really have much to say about that game but yeah grounded uh it looked fine uh looked kind of laggy in fact uh i saw a video by nintendo life which is the uh their page is where i'm getting all the the games that were announced in this direct uh in nintendo life's video uh they talked about how <laughs> how lots of the games did not look the best on switch uh, which I think is two reasons. One, poor optimization, and two, again, the Switch is older hardware, yada, 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 also older builds, you know. But honestly, I didn't really notice too much. Go Grounded looked a little bit more noticeable than other games, but honestly, I didn't really notice it for many of the other games. So maybe I'm bad at frame rates and all that stuff, but eh, I don't know. Uh, we got Ender Monolob, Bloom in the Mist. Uh, that looked interesting, but I don't really have much to say about it. I think it's like a Metroidvania, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Arranger, a role puzzling adventure. Uh, don't really have anything to say about that. Unicron or Unicorn Overload, uh, uh, Overlord. Uh, this game looks interesting. Uh, probably will not get it because even though I do like this is like an RPG type game. Even though I do like those now, especially you know Persona, Xenoblade. Uh, there's just so many other games I need to get through, uh, and I don't have money, so I'm probably gonna skip on this one. But uh, yeah, we saw more of that about that, including its uh, release date. I think we did have a release date for that game before. In fact, a lot of the games in this uh, direct got release dates, which is actually really cool. I'm happy about that because we didn't know about any of these titles coming out besides 2024 so it's nice that we got actual solid release dates for most of them uh monster hunter stories one is coming over to switch it was a 3ds game uh the sequel is out on switch already uh but the first one wasn't uh so i'm glad this is coming over and summer of 2024 it does look like a 3ds game in hd which i don't know how to feel about that monster hunter stories 2 looks more beautiful i prefer how that game looks but this game does still look good. It doesn't look like it looks like it was from the 3DS, but it also doesn't. Like it doesn't have those crusty visuals. Uh, but it, it, you could tell it was like on the 3DS, but like in HD and it looks better. But you could still tell its roots, but eh. Next, we got Disney Epic Mickey Re uh, Rebrust, which is a remake. They call it a remake of the first Epic Mickey. I don't know why they're not doing Epic Mickey 2. But whatever, uh, this game will actually look good, and I'm actually surprised that it is actually getting a remake. I thought Disney forgot about this game entirely. I thought they didn't want to touch Epic Mickey ever again. 
Uh, so it's very nice that they're bringing it over to Switch, and I think this might be only on Switch. I could be wrong about that, uh, but yeah, I'm surprised, and it actually didn't look that bad. Uh, Nintendo Life said it looked not the best, but uh, again, I don't know. Maybe I'm blind or something, but uh, yeah. Okay, this is gonna be a hot topic. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei Five of uh, Vengeance. Oh god, this game was teased. Well, it was like rated in like Korea, I think. So we knew it was coming. I had no idea what it was. I was thinking it was like a definitive edition. Um, but when I first saw the trailer, I was like, is this like a sequel to Shin Megami Tensei Five? And it sort of kind of is. This game was not specified at all, and like in the direct itself, and even now, after the fact, it's still not entirely clear. Like, like it is like a definitive edition, very similar to like Persona 5 Royal was the Persona 5, uh, and it is coming out for all platforms, uh, which is neat. But uh, the way they described it, it looked like it was just DLC, uh, and it's like an alternate route that you can take uh, you could choose the original route which is from the for original uh game that came out like uh a few years ago and then this new route which is like an alter version um but uh, this seems it seems like it's not going to be like an upgrade path for switch users i did see something about if you play the original shin megami tensei 5 on switch you get something when you uh, if you play this game uh you get like some uh demons or something monsters i don't know but i would rather have them have an option to like you know buy an upgrade path for like 20 30 dollars or maybe even a little bit more but please allow an upgrade path but it doesn't even seem like that's gonna happen it's not confirmed yet but it really seems like atlas is doing the stupid atlas thing and you know i talked about at the beginning of this video how i love persona 3 reload um, and they make great games. Uh, Alice makes fantastic games. All the Persona games are good. Shin Megami Tensei, you know. They're all fantastic, but I hate their stupid uh, principles where they're like, oh, let's make uh, a new version of the game and let's charge it for full price, not have an upgrade path for original people that play the game. Uh, it really makes people not want to play uh, the first versions of the game that come out, like, and probably, unless it comes out to Game Pass or something, I'm probably never going to play whenever Persona 6 comes out. I, at least at first, I'll probably play it like when it gets like a Royal, Golden, whatever version down the road. Uh, again, unless it's coming to Game Pass, uh, which is how I'm playing through uh, Persona 3 Reload. But even then, Persona 3 Reload, I don't think it's getting a actual definitive version uh, they, because they... There were talks about the answer DLC coming out, uh, and that being just DLC. Uh, so I don't think there will be like a definitive version um, for that game, which I think is for the best. But this still proves that Atlas is still Atlas and is still stupid about their stupid uh, pricing structure. And uh, I just hate it. Like, why atlas why uh i really hope that's not the case maybe maybe there is an upgraded path for original users i don't have the original sim megami tensei 5 but it was on sale very often so i could see why some people would argue like oh it's fine you know it's a second uh raw that's like 80 hours you know and you they got it on sale but for the people that bought it when it first came out Oh my god, I feel bad for them. I hope there is an upgraded path for Switch users. Obviously, it doesn't matter for like the other consoles, you know. It's fine it, to be like $70 or what, whatever it costs on uh, the other platforms, you know. It's, it's totally cool, but they should really offer an upgraded path for Switch users, but I feel like they're not. And, oh my god, anyway, um, moving on before I... Because that's a big rant in itself. Oh my god, but anyway... Uh, Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection. This was a surprise. I'm guessing Aspire is the one doing these games, uh, remasters. And I'm actually surprised we're getting the Classic Battlefront games on Switch. Uh, and also on PlayStation, I believe. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, I always <laughs> I always wanted the Battlefront games, specifically the EA ones, over uh, 
two switches. Uh, even though I heard like you know the older ones were better, you know. Um, but finally, now that I have a PS5 and Xbox, I could play those EA games. But still, the original Battlefront games were lost, and uh, they were from what I hear better in many ways so it's nice to see them coming back I love all the Star Wars games coming back to switch I mean you see that with Dark Forces you know Knights of the Old Republic uh, Republic Commando there's like so many others uh, I'm so happy that they're all coming to switch it's just a nice nice thing uh, South Park Snow Day uh, got a trailer here don't really have much to say about it I am interested in the South Park games uh, because I was kind of interested in South Park. I never watched the show, but I watched the YouTuber that covered it a lot. So I was kind of interested in it. And the games are included on PS Plus uh, Premium. So uh, I thought about trying them. Um, maybe I still will, but this game looks interesting. But uh, yeah, Short Art Online, Fractured Daydream. I don't really know about the the short art, art online games. There's like so many of them. I don't even know like where to start or like what are they exactly. So I don't really have much of an opinion. Gundam Breaker 4. I don't really have much of an opinion besides Bi Giant Robots looks cool. And it kind of reminded me of the menu of uh, of how you change like the scales in Xenoblade X. So. <laughs> Super Monkey Ball Banana Rumble. It's a new Monkey Ball game exclusive to the Switch. And honestly, this looks really cool. Uh, the characters look a little bit too cutesy for me. But at the same time, the gameplay looks so good. And I don't necessarily mind the characters. It just looks a little too cutesy. But the gameplay itself looks really fun. Uh, and I'm happy. It looks like it's a good Monkey Ball game after uh, the disaster that was Banana uh, Blitz HD, you know. Banana Mania was good. I uh, haven't finished it, but I played it uh, quite a bit. Uh, Banana Blitz HD can suck an egg. Uh, but, but yeah, this game looks good. Uh, and it comes out in the 25th of June. So I'm excited. Uh, yeah, exclusive to Swiss, uh, at least for now. World of Good 2 got a new trailer. Uh, I'm excited for this game uh, because I've heard so many great things about World, uh, World of Goo 1. It's on Switch, you know, it was popular on the Wii days and also on the tablets and phones and all that stuff. Uh, I'm excited and this is apparently a console exclusive uh, for at least a little bit. Uh, so yeah, no tablets or PC version, I think, but probably there will be a PC version eventually. But uh, yeah, got a new trailer, I'm excited. Fantasy Life I uh, and it has like a really long subtitle. We got a release date for this game. I remember seeing this game like I think it was like a year ago and they kept selling it and then like no release date. I don't know, it's like another farming game. I think it was on the 3DS, I think, so yeah. But it's nice that it got a release date. Another Crab's Treasure got a release date, which is cool. This is a Souls-like crab game with Mr. Krabs. No, I'm kidding. But, like, it is with a crab, and it is really cool. Uh, yeah, it looks fun. Um, and it actually looked pretty good on Switch. Uh, and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is made by one of the Game Explain guys, like Tom, I think, from Game Explain. I could be wrong, but I think that's the case. So, uh, good stuff. Um... Penny's Break, Big Breakaway uh, got a release date of today. It's out like right now. Uh, and that's crazy. I, I checked it on the eShop right now. It's $30. Uh, probably not going to buy it immediately. But it is cool that it's finally out. And it came out today. I'm actually surprised that we were going to have to wait a little while longer for it. But uh, yeah, really cool stuff. I'm excited to try it out eventually. Made by the Sonic Mania devs. So it should be a good time all around. Shuka game multiplayer DLC. I actually bought this DLC. Uh, it's uh, it's only like two dollars and like fifty cents, you know. And uh, it's multiplayer co-op right now, but there will be an online uh, update later on. Um, I actually was kind of excited for this because I love Suka game. Uh, I <laughs> like it's a really good game, very addictive. Haven't played it in a little bit. But I'm happy it has the multiplayer version and I will be trying it out 
the DLC when it gets the online stuff. I, I don't really have anyone to play with in co-op, I guess with, besides my brother, but he doesn't really care about uh, puzzle games really, like not even Tetris. So uh, yeah, I would be I would be uh, very excited to try this out like on the channel when it gets the online mode. So. Piper Grinder uh, looks interesting, don't really have much to say about it. Pocket Card Jockey Right On is out today, which is cool because this is a Game Freak title that was exclusive to uh, the 3DS and then it came to Apple Arcade uh, and it was exclusive for a year there. But this is coming out, uh, it's actually already out uh, and it's only $15, which is really cool. I'm happy it's on the eShop. Uh, might buy it at some point in the near future actually uh, because it's cheap. So uh, yeah, I'm happy it came out uh, today and yeah. Stuffkin Melody of Moomin Valley. I don't know. It looks fine. Uh, that guy kind of looks like Tingle. Uh, he has like a weird hat. Anyway, Tales of Zendoria, Z A U or Zo. I don't know. Um, at first, I was thinking this was like another Tales game uh, from the title, but I remember seeing this game uh, from uh, the Game Awards, and this game looks really cool. It's weird. It's like taking inspiration from like uh, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown or whatever, which barely came out this past January. Uh, but this game looks amazing. Um, I really resonated with the guy's story at the Game Awards, talking about his father uh, passing away, and the character in this game has to deal with that, you know, because my dad passed away. So I'm very interested in this game. Uh, and yeah, I didn't recognize it immediately from the title. I just saw the title. I'm like, is that another Tales game? But looking at it, yeah, yeah, I know what it is. But uh, yeah, I'm excited for that game. Uh, Demon Slayer. Uh, Sweep the board. I don't know how you say that middle name. Uh, looks like it's a <laughs> board game and about Demon Slayer. I don't know. Don't really have much to say. Kingdom Come Deliverance Royal Edition, which I believe was rumored to come to Switch for a while, and this actually doesn't look that bad. Like, in fact, it kind of, from what I saw, it kind of looked better running than like Witcher Three, which is weird and crazy. Uh, I'm surprised this game is coming to Switch, even though it was like rumored and like I think it was like rated. Uh, so yeah, it's cool to see this and it actually looks pretty good, surprisingly enough. Contra, Operation Galaga, oh, I don't know how you say that, but uh, yeah, that got a release date and a demo out today as well. Uh, pretty cool stuff, this game looks amazing and I believe it's made by WayForward as well, uh, which, uh, which is cool. Uh, this game looks good, uh, not really big into Contra games even though I do have the collection on the Switch, but it's nice to see that it, it looks like it's a good game, so. Pentamin is the one I talked about earlier, the other Xbox game that doesn't look that interesting. I'm sorry. This looks like boring. I like doesn't look bad, it just looks boring. <laughs> but yeah, they got something here in the direct. It's actually coming out tomorrow. Actually, by the time you see this video, it'll be out now. So and then okay, okay, okay. So I'll talk about this first and then I'll talk about something in the Japanese direct, but uh, we got some new uh, Nintendo Switch Online editions, which is actually surprising. I wasn't expecting to see any Switch Online predicts, uh, uh, Switch Online editions coming over in this direct to be announced. I did say maybe they would do something with like Capcom bringing, bringing over something to the Switch Online service, but I was just drawing like spitballing stuff, but I'm actually surprised. We got Rare games, uh, some of them, you know, I wish it was like more of the, dare I say, better ones, you know, like Diddy Kong Racing, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Donkey Kong 64, but uh, I'm sure those are coming eventually. And the ones we did get, uh, it's really cool that they all came like all at once, five of them, so that's neat. Um, and in the Japanese Direct, we got Mother 3 announced coming over to Switch. But of course, it's only in Japan. Yay! I'm so happy for Japan. Um, I really like Earthbound. Uh, Earthbound Beginnings, I don't really like. But Earthbound I like, I want to play more of. I'm only like three, four hours into that game. Um, but I've heard so, so, so many great things about Mother 3, Earthbound 2, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. I, I guess they will call it like Earthbound Endings. That would be a good title for it if they localized it. But I don't think they ever will localize it because it's coming over to the Switch Online service, but only in Japan. So, oh my god. But that's weird that that was in a partner's showcase because Nintendo owns that. 
Uh, speaking of another thing Nintendo owns, I think, is the last announcement, which is a weird announcement, by the way, to end off the direct partner showcase, which is Endless Ocean Luminous. Uh, it's a new Endless Ocean, not a remake, not a remaster, it's a brand new game. And like I said in my predictions video, I never heard of this game until like a few days ago when Scott DeWaz and Ant Dude were talking about a hypothetical Wii Classic Edition and they brought up that this could be one of the 20, 30 games on there. Um, besides that, I never heard of Endless Ocean, but apparently it's well received. And this game looked fine. It looked kind of good in some places, but in other places it looked kind of choppy <laughs> but uh and it's like apparently fifty dollars it feels like it would be like a twenty dollar game or less but whatever i guess um it is interesting that they have like 30 uh player online co-op or something like that so that's cool uh but yeah this is in a partner direct which is weird because nintendo i believe published and i think they even own the license at least on the wii so i don't know if they still do or like what's going on but yeah, that's weird. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for all the games that were announced in this Direct. Uh, my honest opinion, this was a pretty good, solid Direct. Was it mind-blowing? Not really, though there were some good announcements, some surprises. Uh, I was expecting the Rare uh, games to be added to Switch Online. Um, I was expecting the Monkey Ball game to look that good. Uh, I wasn't expecting Battlefront games at all. And yeah, overall, it was just a solid time. Uh, I'm annoyed about Shin Megami Tensei V uh, Vengeance or whatever. I hope there's an upgraded path for the original owners of that game, but I doubt it. Because again, Atlas makes some fantastic games. I mean, it's just proof because I'm playing Draw One Persona 3 Reload and it's fantastic. I'm loving uh, the characters. I love <laughs> I love romancing the characters. They're, they're really cute. I, I love them, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I just hope there is an upgraded path, but I doubt it because Atlas has done this before, um, but uh, besides that, I mean, this direct, uh, there were a lot of stuff that was leaked from, from Pyro, uh, Pyro, whatever his name is. So, uh, clearly, again, he's like 100% right. He's the only leaker I trust 100% now. But, yeah, uh, I'm still interested to see if they do have a, uh, March reveal for the Switch 2. There were more rumors coming out that it's actually gonna happen in June, and that April will be a bigger, uh, Nintendo Direct, like, with first-party stuff. And like an indie thing coming in March, I think. I don't know. I again, I really hate those rumors. I don't want to talk about them really that much. Uh, I don't care about making videos about all oh, the Nintendo Direct happening this day, this day. I, like I just, it's just so annoying, man. I don't care. But uh, yeah. But overall, this was a good, solid direct. Uh, I give it uh, seven out of ten, maybe. Uh, pretty solid, pretty good, honestly. Um, I wish that Hi-Fi Rust was coming to Switch. Uh, it's only coming out on PlayStation, which is weird, but maybe it will come out for Switch 2. Um, and even though I wasn't expecting it, it would have been cool to see Persona 3 Reload on here. Uh, but knowing Atlas, they probably would mess it up in some way. Like, I don't know, have DLC exclusive to the Switch version. I don't know. They, they do weird stuff. Starting up from the top, we have Mario and Luigi Brothers Zip coming out November 7th, 2024. And yeah, this game is really, really, it looks good. I, I'm gonna be honest, the art style, like I like I like how the art style looks, but I don't really like the like cell shading thing going on. It reminds me of the Kirby's Return to Dreamland uh remake, remaster, whatever, where it has like that weird style which I don't really like personally. But the art style in itself is actually really good, and I'm surprised we're getting another Mario Luigi game. Like that's really cool. I I did think the series would continue. I wonder who was making this. Uh, this new game but um like i still thought it was gonna be a while before we would see another mario luigi game but i'm glad we're finally getting it and it's coming out very soon this year so yeah um we also got some more news on nintendo world championships and yes at this in uh which i will be probably be able to pick up uh when it comes out on july 18th so uh yeah i'll be 
probably be able to cover it on the channel, but yeah, it looks interesting, but they just sold off more stuff about it. Uh, they revealed Fairy Tale 2 coming out winter 2024. Um, the game looked fine, I guess. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going over all the announcements uh, from the Nintendo Life uh, com website. Uh, you know, so I, I might not have much to say on some of these announcements, so I apologize. But anyway, uh, next up we got Phantasm, Neo Dimension. I don't know how you pronounce uh, this game, um, but this was an Apple Arcade game that was stuck on there for like, I don't know, a few years. And then it was like rumored that it would be coming to Switch and other platforms within like a few months ago. Uh, so it's nice to see this game friendly get out of the chains of uh apple arcade and be released you know on more platforms so that more people can access it without a subscription service that's really cool um this is a big surprise for me and honestly it might be my favorite announcement uh and that being nintendo switch sports is getting a new update the basketball update coming summer of 2024 I'm thinking it might come out around August, September time, but it could, could come out July. Um, but yeah, this is a big surprise because I, I really do like Switch Sports. I think it gets a little bit too much hate, in my opinion. Um, there were rumors, although they came from Midori, which Midori was... Mm, um, anyway, um, there were rumors that they were working on a new Switch Sports game. But I guess those rumors turned out to be kind of wrong, but at the same time kind of right in that we are getting new content for Switch Sports, which is really cool. I'm really excited for it. This gives me hope that we'll see something like um, boxing, you know, uh, or maybe ba uh, baseball. We could see some new sports besides basketball. And it's crazy that it's happening like two years before after the game is like done, you know, like and like a, a year after the last update, which was the golf thing. Like, I'm really happy about that. Uh, so yeah, this is honestly might be my biggest surprise of the direct. So uh, after that, we got Mio Memories in Orbit, the new Xenoblade game. Oh my God. Now I actually do have to do the sleep stream. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, it just has the same name as uh, as Mio from Xenoblade 3. But this game does look cool. It, it looks like a Metroidvania style game. Um, it, it kind of gave me vibes, besides the name, it kind of gave me vibes of something like Ori or, like, Silk Song, you know, uh, and, and, like, before that, even before that, it gave me vibes of, like, Cocoon, Inside, Limbo, um, but, yeah, this game looks interesting, um, I just find it funny, the name, <laughs> the name, Mio, why would you do this to me? Anyway, um, after that, we got Disney Illusion Island, we got a new update, Mystery and Monolith update is that what it's called i don't know um after that we got looney tunes wacky world of sports uh with when this trailer played i just kept thinking of the space jam song like come on and slam C come on and slam the, the the looney tunes uh game comes out in fall 2024 and i think i didn't mention this the disney illusion island update comes out today so among Us, uh, is an update came out today, which was leaked ahead of time because that's how we found out about the direct state in the first place. Uh, we got Farm Agia, Farm Agia. Uh, that's the next game that was announced, November first, twenty twenty four. This is like a farming game, but like you're also doing something with monsters. So it looked kind of interesting. Um, but now another big one. Well. I, I say big in like quotes, but uh, we got an announcement for Donkey Kong Country Returns HD uh, coming out January 16th, 2025. And uh, yeah, this game, I, it makes me wonder, like, I think this is a nice announcement, don't get me wrong. One, why is it coming out in January? And two, why is there no new Donkey Kong game? Like, where is Donkey Kong? Like, it's been so long since we've had Donkey Kong Country Returns, you know? That was the Returns. Uh, we're we're going to have to have a Donkey Kong Country Returns Returns at some point, right? Uh, like, I don't know where is Donkey Kong, you know? He just keeps getting, like, these uh, remakes, remasters, or ports, or whatever, you know? Like, Mario vs. Donkey Kong. I want a new game. Um, but, you know, this is at least nice, you know, uh, the HD game um, remaster or whatever. It includes the 3DS levels, so that's neat. 
Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm I just wondering where is a new Donkey Kong game? That was rumored about many years ago, and I don't know. Is this what it turned into? Yeah, totally. Anyway, um, after that, we got an announcement for Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake. Well, it was announced the release date. We knew about this already. It comes out November 14th, 2024. Um, along with that, at the very end, we got uh, n new announcements of Dragon Quest 1 and 2 HD 2D Remake coming out in 2025. I wish they would have put them all together into one collection. Like, I, I feel like that would have been the way to go. It feels weird. I know 3 is a prequel or whatever, and they even said that in the thing to play it like 3, 1, 2, but still, I would rather have all of them come out at the same time and be like a collection of sorts. So, whatever. Um, after that, we got Funko Fusion coming out September 13th, 2024. This game looks both good and stupid and bad at the, like all three at the same time like it kind of looks funny um like it kind of looks interesting too but it also didn't look like it ran the best um but it is interesting about the multiple characters you know like having marty mcfly uh having freddy fazbear or, 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 or uh having multiple characters there is uh <laughs> so it was interesting so um yeah i don't know um, after that, we got, uh, you know, a little teaser again for Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, which is coming out June 27th. Uh, we got this game called The New Dempa Men, which looked like Tomodachi Life and, um, Metopia at first. But no, this is apparently from a very, very niche series that I had no idea existed. It kind of looked like, they, again, it looked like Mii's, this, this, uh game that they were using but no it comes out july 22nd uh so of this year um after that we got metal slug attack reloaded it's out now um darkest dungeon 2 out july 15th uh so oh and then now okay this is another big one we got nintendo switch online expansive pack updates we got we got Metroid Zero Mission, which is hype. I'm happy that's finally on, on the service, you know. I beat the game on my Wii U, but I didn't do the, like, extra content of Zero Suit Samus, so that's neat. We also got a link between... A Link to the Past, um, a Four Swords Adventure, or whatever, Four Swords. Like, the... You know, GBA version of A Link to the Past, but it includes the Four Swords thing, which is neat. Um, also, we got an, an announcement for the N64 17 Plus app, which uh, launched with a Perfect Dark and uh, and Turok, I, I think that's the name of the game. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm interested in it. Uh, I did do, I already played those games. Uh, I'm really happy with the Game Boy Advance games. The N64 games are kind of clunky. Perfect Dark, Dark was better, but Turok was like it controlled horribly on the Switch. So, I don't know. We'll see if they improve that or what. But it's this new app that came with the Switch Online. Um, it does give us potential to see something like Conquer's Bad Fur Day, which is really cool. Anyway, Phantom Brave The Lost Heroes, another game that was announced 2025. Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection Arcade Classics comes out 2024 or this year, um, which is interesting. Um, I believe Marvel vs. Capcom 2, it was like delisted like 10 years ago or something. So um, it's nice to see that brought back. This is another big one. Super Mario Party Jamboree comes out October 17th, 2024. This is, this game is, well, when I first saw it was a sequel to Super Mario Party, I'm, I was a little bit, not disappointed, I actually do like Super Mario Party, I think it gets a bad rap, but at the same time, I would rather play with a pro controller, and I, it's not confirmed if you can play with a pro controller, but anyway, um, I was a surprise we would get a sequel to, we would get a sequel to Super Mario Party. Um, but then they sold, it was kind of like mixing, uh, Mario Party Superstars, like, stuff into Super Mario Party as well, like, to combine it into a new game. So that's really cool, you know, they say this is the biggest Mario Party ever, and uh, it looked like it from the content. I mean, it has 110 mini games. it's a new record for the series. Uh, yeah, this game looks actually really cool. I'm, I'm decently excited for it, so, um, yeah. And then this is another big one. The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom 
This is a new Zelda game, new 2D Zelda game, where you're actually playing as Zelda. So finally, the Legend of Zelda series makes sense with its title. <laughs> uh, I did see some people saying it was a missed opportunity to not title this game The Legend of Zelda The Missing Link. Oh my god, I wish they would have gone that. I mean, it would have made sense. But no, Echoes of Wisdom, fine, whatever. But at least we can finally play as Zelda. That's really, really cool. In fact, I think there was like a rumor about uh, a new 2D Zelda game or whatever, like where you actually play as Zelda. So that's a neat. Uh, yeah, really excited for that game. Oh, and it comes out um, on September 26, 2024. We're also getting a Switch Lite, which looks really cool for it. Uh, so yeah. Next game was Just Dance uh, 2025. Uh, comes out October 2024. I always find it weird that these like yearly games don't come out on the year. Uh, of what it says. I don't know why they come out like before. I feel like they should come out the year of. I don't know. But anyway, there you go. Um, we got like a basically an advertisement. Like we didn't even get any new information. It was just uh, like an ad for Lego Horizons Horizon Adventures, which is holiday 2024, which is still surprising that that's coming to Switch. You know, it's a Sony game, albeit Lego, but still. Stray, which is, I'm excited for this one to finally come to Switch. It was surprising that it wasn't on Switch already, but it's nice to see it here. It's coming out holiday of 2024. Uh, Tales of, of Shire, a Lord of the Rings game, comes out winter 2024. We saw more of that. Uh, this was... Uh, a surprise, but it also was leaked early, so I don't know. Um, Ace Attorney Investigations Collection comes out September 6th uh, of this year, and yeah, it's nice to have. I think this completes basically all the Ace Attorney games. It's a Professor Layden crossover Ace Attorney game, but I think besides that one, I think we have all the Ace Attorney games available on modern consoles, at least on Switch. I think this game, actually don't know. This game might be announced for the other consoles, Ace Attorney investigations but at the very least all the ace attorney games basically are on switch so that's neat but probably in the other consoles too uh, next game we got was the hundred line last defense academy which is basically a Denkenrapa game is made by the same people. It's basically a Denkenrapa game, but with more focus on like gameplay and combat, I, from what I can tell, because it's still about students and it's about like being in an, like in an area, you know, there's like a mascot guy, you know. So it's basically like a Denkenrapa game, but um, I don't know why they didn't just call it that because it's very, very similar to Denkenrapa. Um, but whatever, you know, comes out 2025. Uh, uh, another game we had is Romancing Saga. Is that how you say it? I don't know. Two Revenge of the Seven comes out October 24th, 2024. And then last but not least, we got the first, first look at Metroid Prime 4 Beyond coming out 2025. And this game does look good. It does look good. When I first saw the game in its reveal trailer... I'm gonna be honest guys, it kind of felt underwhelming. It kind of felt like it looked good. The game did look good. But at the same time, the trailer felt kind of underwhelming. Like, okay, that's it. We've been waiting for like seven years for that game and that's it. Like, like I don't know. But I've kind of come around to it a little bit more. Uh, looking at it a bit more, I realized that it is really cool looking. Um, you know, I still kind of feel it was a little bit underwhelming, but at the same time, maybe that's because it was a teaser, you know, we'll see more of this game, you know, throughout the year, you know, so I'm sure, we'll, you know, it will look better and better and better, and, uh, yeah, so, but it's nice that we finally got some gameplay and a subtitle, that's really cool, um, but yeah, that's, that's it for the Nintendo Direct, all of the announcements. And I gotta say, this was a really, really good Direct. I am happy with it. Again, there was no Xeno-related stuff. No Xenoblade X, Rip, no Xeno Gears, no Xeno Saga, you know. I'm disappointed. Not even a, a new Warriors game. I would've thought we would've gotten a new Warriors game. Uh, because it's like been two years since the last one. But nope. So we can't do the sleep stream. <laughs> that was a bet we had for the predictions video yesterday. But I'm still really happy with the direct. We got a lot of good announcements. And a lot of people, like especially Pyro, which um, uh, Pyro is apparently in some hot water right now too. Because 
uh, Piro, the bird guy on Twitter, uh, he said to not expect much first party stuff. And we got like six, eight first party announcements here. Like some of it was free DLC for like Switch Sports or whatever. But some of it was also brand new titles. And uh, yeah, he also did say that there will be a, a remake of a 2D Zelda game. Um, though he did say to take it with a grain of salt. Um, but that was, like, wrong because it was, uh, a brand new 2D Zelda game. So, uh, yeah, and he was a bit salty when people were rightfully complaining about him. Like, like, what are you doing here? And he got, like, kind of salty about it. So, it's interesting what's going on with the leakers. But anyway, the point being, what I was trying to say is just the fact that, um... Basically, this Direct blew everyone's minds. People were expecting nothing much of this Direct. Because most people are looking forward to the Switch 2 or whatever, you know. Um, but this Direct shows that the Switch 1 still has some life in it. It still has some juice. It still has some meat in the bone, you know. And, yeah, that's really exciting because I think... Because of this Direct, we are more guaranteed for the Switch to pass like 150 million and become the best-selling console ever. Um, at least it's going to be closer to that, probably thanks to this Direct, at least in my opinion. Let's just go right from the beginning. I have a list here provided by Nintendo Life uh, going over all of the announcements in order. You know, starting with the indie world and then to the Nintendo thing. So, uh, starting things off here, we have a new update for the card game Balroto. I don't know if that's how you say it. Friends of Jumbo free update, uh, which has Among Us, Vampire Survivors, Witcher 3, and Dave the Diver. Um, as like decks. I've heard good things about this game. In fact, it's really highly rated. I don't know if it's my kind of game, but I might get it eventually. I mean, it's only $15. It's actually on sale on the eShop for like $13 right now or $12. I don't know, but it's on sale for a little bit off and I might get it just because again, they, uh, this is a highly rated game and people really love it. It's very addicting from what I hear. And plus they bringing in like stuff that I do like, like Vampire Survivors, which I love that game. So to see them doing like a collab or whatever with like themed cards, that's really neat. So yeah, might get that eventually. Uh, next up we got Neva. I believe, the, yeah, this is made by the same people as the Grius game or whatever. This kind of reminded me of sort of like Ori or something. So yeah, that looked neat. Uh, Moth Cupid. It's a real RPG. I'm just going to mention the games here. I won't talk about too much of them, you know, if I don't have much to say. Coffee Talk Tokyo, which I've heard of Coffee Talk. Uh, this looked interesting, you know. I don't know if the Coffee Talk games are for me, but... Uh, well, there you go. There's a new one. Um, but this is exciting, though. Sea of Stars, Throws of the Watchmaker DLC. It's free DLC, by the way. Coming out spring 2025. I, I have, I'm happy to see this game getting free DLC. I thought it was going to be paid DLC when I first heard that this game was getting DLC in the first place. But it's free. Let's go. I don't have this game anymore. I had it on PS Plus, but they removed it, sadly. I think it's still on Game Pass for some reason, though I feel like it's going to be removed from Game Pass very soon, you know. I don't know why it, it's staying longer there, but I, I think it will be removed soon. So, um, yeah, I, I'm going to have to buy this game at some point. Um, but, it, you know, the, the normal cost is like $35, though I think I've seen it on sale, like, even recently. It's on sale for like $22, so I might get it relatively soon, you know, to finish the game because I only have like five hours into it, so I can play this DLC. But it's nice that it's free, you know, I love that. Next up, we got Power Wash Simulator, Shrek Special Pack, which I... Oh, this is a paid DLC. Okay. For some reason, I was thinking this was a free DLC, but this is paid. Um, most of the DLC for this game is, like, free. I have this game on uh, PS Plus. It's one of the monthly games, like, from the past, like, few months or something. So I could technically play this, and I don't know how much the DLC costs. I'm pretty sure it's, like, really cheap or something. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the Shrek thing, it looked interesting, you know. Um, I just don't know if Power Wash Simulator is my kind of game. We got Moozles, February 2025. Oh, by the way, Power Wash Simulator, the Shrek thing comes on in fall. Um, I'm going to try to mention the release dates too, um, or release windows. But then we got Date Everything. This game is so stupid, I love it. You can date, like, you can 
say you want to go out with your TV and that TV turns into like a humanoid. Like it's so stupid, so surreal, and it's so freaking funny. I love it. Like it can go on a date with your phone or Instagram. I think there was like something like that. Um, but so it's really stupid. I love it. Uh, I, I might I might whistle list this game. I might buy it. <laughs> um, maybe not eventually. Like maybe not soon, but eventually, you know. Um, comes out 24th of October. I actually thought this game came out like it was already out, you know? I knew I heard of it like somewhere else before, but I thought it was already out on Switch. Um, I guess I was wrong, so yeah. Um, we got Pelagin. I don't know if that's how you say it. It's out today if you want to check it out. Uh, it's a pachinko inspired RPG. When I first heard the word pachinko, I was like, oh, really? But the gameplay actually looks pretty good. I like it. Um, so yeah, might get it eventually though. It's $20. So maybe I'll wait for a sale. That's usually the case for me. I want to wait for a sale. Um, next up we got a uh, wobbly life, uh, December, 2024, vibrant open world, physics, sandbox, whatever. Uh, Pico Park 2. Pico Park 2, it's available right now, today. Um, and then we kind of got like a sizzle reel of stuff like Solo Knight, Silver of Hope DX, which is coming 2025, which I think, I think it's stupid that they're doing like a, like another version of Silver Knight. Like, I wish this was a free upgrade, you know, for the original people that bought several uh several night you know with the treasure trove i feel like it's kind of dumb and i don't think it's even needed like why are they even doing this i mean i know why more money so they can fund their other games but again i feel like they should just do it like a free upgrade or something i don't know uh europa you know uh the october 11th uh we got cruise center uh january 28th on your tail which is uh coming out november 21st two days after my birthday and it's a furry game so i'm in love with the main character um but yeah metal slug tactics fall 2024 uh plucky squire september 17th which is coming to ps plus which i'm gonna play and last but not least we finally got it the last announcement of the indie world thing was pizza tower and it's out right now um i i should say that I, i'm saying today but you're gonna see this video in like two days or or in one day if you're a youtube or patreon member you know so sorry it's out like right now you know the 27th of august um so yeah pizza tower i'm so happy that this game is out on switch i, I thought it was coming to switch but i was like so confused why the developer whatever said that oh i don't know if it's ever coming to switch i don't think it's uh it will ever come it will ever happen i don't know he said something about it um but that was clearly a lie which i'm happy about uh, so yeah, I, I, I mean, this game looks good. It's like a Wario Land inspired game. It's $20. I might pick it up at some point in the near future. Um, this and another game that I want to talk about, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I'll pick them up relatively soon, you know, once I get YouTube monies. So if you want to make me get these games sooner, become a YouTube member. We have more tiers available and then that could help support me getting these games sooner. Anyway, seamless plug out of the way. Let's start off with the Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase thing. Uh, we have the first game announced that I, 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 this is already a banger. I love this. Tetris Forever. It's a collection of past Tetris games, and I love it. I love me some Tetris. I love Tetris 99, Tetris on the Game Boy, uh, Tetris Effect. Uh, like, I, I just love Tetris. And to see them doing, like, a compilation of past Tetris games, like, that's really, really cool, really, really neat. Uh, it comes out in, at some point uh, this year, so hopefully we get a release date. Um, I'm gonna guess it might be $40, so kind of steep. Maybe I'll, I'll be wrong, you know, if it's $20, that's, that, that will be perfect, but I feel like it's gonna be $40, my, my guess, but I guess you never know, but I do want to pick this up eventually, like, this is really cool, so yeah. Star Overdrive, coming out in 2025, this game looked cool, it kind of reminded me of, like, a mess-up between Hi-Fi Ross, Xenoblade, and then also, like, a little bit of, like, Pokemon, like, I don't know, it was, like, a weird mess-up of all of them, um, so yeah. Uh, Goat Simulator 3, out now, uh, 
So yeah, this game was already available on other places. Uh, and it's out now on Switch, so neat. I, I remember when the first game was was very popular, you know, like many years ago. And I was tempted to buy it multiple times um, on like the Switch. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if I'll ever get the Goat Simulator games. If I do, I'll probably start with the first one. Um, this game was like, it was only shown off for like a little bit on the Nintendo of America channel. But I believe this was shown in like the Japanese Direct longer. That being a remake or remaster of the first Tales in the Sky game. The Legend of Heroes Tales in the Sky, the first, 2025. That's when it comes out. Um, I don't really know that much about the Tales games. Although I saw lots of people excited that this was getting like a remake or remaster or something. So yeah, there you go, guys. I'm happy for you. I, what's the first Tales game ever? Like, what is it? And I, I know the Tales games are like... Oh my god, there's like so many of them and you have to play them all in like an order or at least like there's like arcs, you know, so you have to start with like, oh, the first game in this arc to understand the rest of the arc. I don't know. I don't really know that much about it, um, but I'm happy for those fans. So we got a, I think this was a sizzle reel part. Uh, that was part of the sizzle reel in, um, again, America. But this was part of the sizzle reel as well, being Star Wars Hunter Season 3 coming out September 26, which I feel like the seasons are going really fast in this game. Like, the game, like, barely came out, Star Wars Hunters, uh, and I feel like the seasons are going by. Like, I just barely heard that Season 2 started, and now we're hearing about Season 3. I I'm kind of worried that the game is going to die, you know? I actually like the game from what I played of it, so that's kind of sad that the seasons are rolling on by, like, really fast. Anyway, we got Stalker Legends of the Zone Trilogy. Uh, comes out in November 2024. Uh, Disney Dreamlight Valley, end of summer in game event, uh, the 4th to 26th of September. Then we got something about uh, an update on the SpongeBob SquarePants uh, Patrick Star game, which actually looks really cool, but it's weird because it's made by the same developers as like, they make a lot of like, you know, kids games. You know, the most recent one that I can think of is the Bluey game, which I hear is fine, the Bluey game. I love Bluey, the TV, so, um, but the game I hear is fine. But like the other games I, they're not good like from what I've seen like they have a Paw Patrol one or whatever but this game actually looks really good like it looks like they got the assets from you know the remake that came out uh for Battle of Bikini Bottom and like also that new game um Cosmic Sake or whatever it looks like they're just reusing the assets and that's why this game looks so good um so yeah and it comes out um on October 4th of this year so yeah Fitness Boxing 3 your personal trainer comes out December 5th why are there so many uh fitness boxing games like there's like again there's like three main ones and then there's like a um, Hitsu Miku, uh, you know, spinoff, and then there's, like, an, an anime character one, you know, like, a, of a guy or something, I don't know. Uh, we got this one, which I got confused because the art made it seem like it was, like, a new game in the series or something, but it's Capcom Fighting Collection 2, uh, this includes, you know, a lot of the... Uh, Capcom versus um, SMK, right? SMK games or whatever, which is neat. Uh, uh, again, comes out 2025. And I thought this was a new game at first because the art looked like it was new. So, yeah. And then we got another mention of Marvel versus Capcom Fighting Collection, Arcade Classics, coming September 12th, you know, at least digitally. Um, and then we got this weird thing, like, near the end of the Direct, which I, I was confused. I thought this was, like, at first I was thinking this was finally against an Impact or Hawkeye Star Rail, the other game by the developers. But no, this is Altria Yuma, the Archimist of Memories, and the Envisioned Land. I don't know, but this game reminded me of Xenoblade as well, you know, like, it was, like, like very similar, but again, I thought it was like Genshin Impact or Hawk Rise Star Rail or whatever, but it's not. So, um, where is uh, Genshin Impact? I heard that it's coming out on Xbox like very soon. Where the heck is it on Switch? If it's canceled, tell us it's canceled. If it's still coming, say it's still coming. Like, why are they not? 
being open about it. I hate when developers are not open about things, which is why I kind of, even though it's a, a bit annoying, this is a side thing, by the way, even though it's a bit annoying, I do like when Nintendo says, oh, this game is delayed, we're sorry, you know, for Metroid Prime 4 or Tears of the Kingdom, you know? Um, I do like that. I like them. I like when the developers are honest and be like, yeah, this is not coming out anytime soon. So just say that or say it's canceled or something, you know? I don't know. It's annoying. Anyway, um, after that, uh, we got Tsukien 1 and 2 HD Remaster or whatever. Uh, we heard about this game for a while, and now it's finally getting a release date on March 6th of 2025. Uh, Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake coming out November 14th. Um, kind of regret buying the original version on Switch for like $3, but you know. It's still $3, so whatever. This was the other hype announcement that I might pick up soon. That being Castlevania Domus Collection. I probably mispronounced that. I probably mispronounced all of these names, so I'm sorry. But it's out right now, and it's a compilation of the DS games and also, like, reimagining of an arcade game, which I don't know why they put... These, like, one Castlevania that doesn't match in the collection with the other ones that do. You know, that's what they did with the Advanced Collection 2 for, you know, the Game Boy Advance games. They included, like, a SNES game there that they didn't do in the last collection. I don't know. It's kind of weird. I don't know. But whatever. I, I love that we have been getting these Castlevania games. I'm so happy. I saw it's, like, on the eShop right now for $20 which I might pick up. Um, of course, you know, the Castlevania stuff goes on sale pretty often. The original Castlevania collection uh, has been on sale for like $5 and it comes with like 10 games or something, which is crazy. Uh, and I bought the, the Castlevania Advanced collection for full price, which was $20. And it later went on sale for, I think $10, at least 15, I know for sure. So, yeah, maybe I'll wait for this one to go on sale, but I don't know. Knowing me, I might just get it relatively soon because I, I just love, I love collections. I do. I love getting a bunch of games in one go and, like, for a cheap price. Like, ah, oh, that's just so good. I love the collections, man. So, yeah. Uh, we got a shout out for Sid Meier's Civilization 7, uh, February 11th or whatever. I don't really care. Tales of Grius F Remastered. Uh, okay, January 17th. My Sims Cozy Bundle comes out November 19th. My birthday, boys. And will I be getting this gift as a birthday present? Uh, 99% sure no, because... This game looks fine, although it just makes me wonder where the heck is the, you know, the actual Sims games, like where Sims 4. I know these games are from the Wii, and this was actually leaked like before, like a few days ago or something. But I just find it weird that we don't have Sims like the normal ones on Switch. Like, come on, that would be perfect with like motion controls and touchscreen, you know, I feel like that would be perfect or whatever. Uh, we got Five Nights at Freddy's, uh, Help Wanted 2, and Security Breach Ruin, which I thought that the DLC was already out on Switch, but no. Um, comes out holiday of 2024, sat out of Disney Epic Mickey Rebrush, comes out September 24th. Uh, Tales of Strider, a Lord of the Rings game, holiday 2024. Just Dance 2025. Comes out in October 15th, Funko Fusion, Holiday 2024. These are just all, like these were in a scissor reel or something. Um, EA Sports FC 25 comes out September 27th, which I always find it weird that the yearly games, and I feel like it makes more sense for them to come out at the beginning of the year, you know, but they don't. They come out at the end of the last year, and I kind of, I don't like that personally. I don't know. Anyway, Lego Horizon Adventures, which is still crazy that that's a PlayStation game on Switch, but it comes out, it, they say holiday 2024 here. I'm pretty sure they actually gave a release date of like November or something in the direct, so what the heck. Anyway, Rune Factory Guardians of Azuma, uh, Spring 2025. And last but not least, we got Yakuza Konami, Kinami, I don't know if I, I said that right. It comes out October 24th, and I believe this game is actually $20. I saw something about that online. And yeah, this is, this is like, I think this is a prequel. This is technically complete first in the Yakuza series or whatever. Um, technically, I think 
to start off, I think you could play like a lot of them pretty well and, and be good. You know, like I played a little bit of uh, Yakuza 0 and that's like the first game, technically speaking, I think. Or I think that's also pretty cool. I don't know. There's a lot of Yakuza stuff, but you know, this is technically one of the first games. Uh, at least chronically. So yeah, but it's cool that they're bringing it to Switch. And this is really cool because one, this game came out on Wii U and then the developers, uh, for some stupid reason, they're like, oh, I don't think we'll ever bring Yakuza to Switch because the audience doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't fit it, you know, it's only for families to Switch. And I'm like, Bro, you put out Yakuza on the Wii U, the Switch is successful, we got stuff like The Witcher 3, Persona, like a lot of other mature games. If you look at the eShop, we have a lot of hentai games, like, oh my god. Like, and you saying that the Switch doesn't, it doesn't have an audience for Yakuza? Like, are you stupid? Like, like genuinely. So it's nice to see that they finally listen to fans and they bring in this game over to Switch. Uh, yeah, and I'm guess I feel like this is gonna open the floodgates for more Yakuza games, both on Switch and Switch Two. Uh, which I do want to talk about a little bit uh, later about Switch Two, how this like presentation thing relates to that. But yeah, overall this was a it was a good presentation. The indie world was fine. The only thing I really cared about though was the Pizza Tower. That was a hype thing. Of course, there were lots of people still expecting silk song even one of my mods uh strawberry wanted silk song and she was in the live stream and she didn't get it so rip uh no silk song but besides that we had good stuff you know in the indie world there's nothing really too too crazy besides pizza tower and then the nintendo direct partner showcase thing it had tetris it had castlevania and it had yakuza which are good announcements i'm happy but still nothing like too too crazy I, f I think the the partner showcase thing was way better in February. Like, I just think that was way better because it had, like, uh, Shin Megami Tensei Five engines and, like, many other stuff. Uh, so, yeah, this was a, a fine event. Maybe I would give it a 7 out of 10 in total, you know? So, before we move on to the Sonic the Movie 3 trailer or whatever, because I do have a few thoughts on it. Uh, which was very hype. I do want to talk about what this presentation means for Nintendo's upcoming future and the Switch 2 and all that stuff. I'm sure many of you, including myself, are tired of hearing Switch 2 this, Switch Pro that. You know, I've been hearing rumors about a new Switch since the Switch even came out. I remember there were talks like, Oh, maybe there's going to be a Switch Mini. That's what they called it before it was introduced as a Switch Lite. Maybe there's going to be a Switch Pro, you know? Like, around the time when the Switch first came out. And then we kept hearing rumors and rumors and rumors. Some of them were right. Most of them weren't. And they were so annoying. And I hate them. That's why, that's why I don't really cover that many rumors, especially about Switch 2 or whatever, on the channel. I just hate talking about them. I hate seeing them. But there has been a lot of evidence pointing that Nintendo is starting to move on from the Switch and going to the Switch 2, you know. Will it be called Switch 2? We don't know. I, I'm, I think it might be called like Super Switch or something like, you know, Super Nintendo Entertainment System or SNES. You know, we'll see what it's called. But anyway, I think... Uh, well, one, I think the reason why that there's more evidence pointing to uh, Switch 2 coming soon is just the fact that Nintendo did say themselves that they will have an announcement uh, within the financial year, which is till March of 2025, we will hear something about the Switch 2, you know, um, at some point, you know, within that time. You know, that could be until the very last minute, but they did confirm it, Nintendo themselves, you know, and even underneath these presentations, since they've tweeted like oh please know that there is no mention of the switch successor in this presentation or whatever so they know their fans and they know that um you know um people were speculating about switch 2 which is why they announced the thing in the first place you know technically announced it you know pre-announced it i guess you could say that's one of the reasons but another reason why 
um, I feel like they're moving on is because, well, we had at the beginning of the year, we had a partner showcase, which was really good. Um, and we also had a uh, this partner showcase, you know, in the indie world combined, you know, both events combined and they were actually moved up. I was thinking when I first heard rumors that these were going to be moved up, I'm like, are you sure? No, they're doing it in September, but no, they moved it up to August. Which is weird. Usually you see Nintendo have these things in September. Maybe the indie world would have been in August and then the the Nintendo Direct would be in September. But yeah. So they had like two throughout the year they had two Nintendo Direct Partner showcases, you know? And only one main direct in June. Which was, it was good. It was a good direct, you know. But it was pretty light, all things considered. Like, I just think with all this in consideration, I think, yeah, the Switch 2 is coming very soon. And I think the reason we had these, like, two double events come together, uh, at, you know, at the end of August instead of, like, September uh, or spreading them out is because I think we will see an announcement of Switch 2 at some point in the near future. Like, maybe... I don't know if September, but like maybe early October, you know? I don't know. I, I can see it happening soon, which is weird because I thought personally that Nintendo wouldn't announce the Switch 2 until after the holidays, you know, for them to finally sell out the last of the Switch stock to potentially beat the PS2 or whatever. Uh, but I don't think they are. Nintendo doesn't really care about passing the PS2. I kind of want them to, but Nintendo doesn't seem to care. I mean, it's like the second best selling console in the world. I don't think they care about being the number one. They're just like, oh, we did really good. Let's move on, you know, and maybe we could carry this moment I don't know. Um, I, I don't think they really care. So I, I think there's very, it's very possible we do see a Switch 2 announcement this year, which is, again, weird. I thought we might have seen it in, like, January or something uh, next year. But no. So, uh, yeah, anything is possible. If I had to say when, I think we might see it around October. That's when we will see at least a trailer or something, like, at the very beginning of it maybe late september but i think early october is a good good chance you know but you know anything can happen it's nintendo so yeah this is my thoughts and i i still hate to say it because i again i think the switch could have lasted 10 years fully but everyone wants to move on from it and it looks like nintendo themselves does too but i really think the switch could have lasted 10 full years on its own with no other console like, oh my god. Anyway, um, that's more than enough rambling about the Switch 2 or whatever. That's just my thoughts. But now let's get on to the last news of the day. That being Sonic the Movie 3 trailer. Oh boy, this was a good trailer. Um, I know not many people, including one of my viewers, uh, Pun Pun, who's also a mod of the channel. He doesn't like the Sonic movies, you know. Uh, he's a big Sonic fan. Um, I, I like Sonic. I, I'm like, I'm not like crazy about Sonic games. You know, I like them decently enough. I didn't grow up with them like I did with Mario. But the Sonic movies, I actually really, really do like. And I feel bad for people that don't like them. I can understand why, but personally, I just do. Like, I love the dynamic with Sonic and Tom, you know, and his wife. Like, they're like a family, you know. I love the human characters. Like, like I don't know. I love a lot about the Sonic movie series. I've watched Sonic 1 and 2, you know, the movies. I watched them on Nickelodeon, like, very recently. I knew, like, the plots or whatever, and I knew what happened in them. But I didn't actually sit down and watch them until very recently recently like i don't know a few months ago or something and then um they started airing the knuckles tv show on nickelodeon as well and i watched the first three episodes and i still haven't watched the last three um i had them recorded i need to watch them at some point but i just love this movie series and i definitely want to finish knuckles and the sonic the hedgehog mo uh, movie 3 trailer that's a mouthful to say but like that trailer made me want to watch knuckles more because uh yeah it was like really good again if you want to see my reaction to it link will be in the description i watched it at the end after the nintendo stuff but i really liked it i liked seeing shadow you know it looks like we're actually gonna see uh 
Sato's like friend, you know, that girl or whatever. I can't remember her name, but we might actually see her get shot down, which would be very funny to see in a kids movie, quote unquote, or whatever. Um, but yeah, like I love the narration. I love the music. I'm like one of those weirdos that likes watching trailers after like a movie or TV show comes out because the trailers are like really good. If they're like really good, you know, I feel like that elevates like the season or the movie, you know, and it gets you hyped even if you've already seen it, you know? Again, I like watching them after they come out, the movie or season or so or whatever. But anyway, um, I thought this trailer was really good. Uh, I like seeing Tom uh, basically, you know, talking about Sonic, about family, and then Sonic thought it was his lungs. Um, and then, like, I was surprised when there's, like, a side of Tom where he's, like, on the ground or whatever saying, uh, I don't know, he's saying something, and he's, like, in a, in, like, a major police thing and i don't know if he's like undercover or if he just moved up the ranks because he was like a sheriff you know in the past two movies so is he like a undercover guy right now or is it like is he above the ranks now as a like a top police guy or like a security guy i don't know um but i was fascinated by what sato said about he did something to sonic's loved ones or something which i assume that means like tom you know so yeah i'm again i'm really excited i can't really say much else besides that i like the trailer i guess i like that robotnik is fat now um although it can, can be kind of hard to tell that he is fat when he's wearing the suit but i'm glad he's fat now um you know of course i'm glad to see jim carrey again he's really funny um as robotnik i like the movies i like the from what i've seen of knuckles you know but i'm not like a big sonic guy so i can't be like oh here's this little detail i noticed you can hear the sonic 2 theme right here you can hear the saddle the hedgehog theme like i know a little bit you know about the rough outlines like i know about the girl you know with shadow you know i can figure things out and i know a bit about things but i can't really explain them well because yeah that's just not me i just want to talk about my ramblings that i just thought this was a good trailer and i'm really excited to see the movie at some point not when it comes out but <laughs> maybe when it comes out on Nickelodeon in like three years or something so yeah um anyway I think that's gonna be it what is this like a 33 minute video um so I hope you enjoyed watching this guys I really did enjoy uh watching this stuff again I think the Nintendo stuff I think I would rate both of them like a 7 out of 10 if I had to rate them individually maybe the indie world would be 6 out of 10 you know the only thing holding it higher is Pizza Tower and the partner showcase thing maybe eight out of ten though i feel like seven out of ten is also good for it i don't know and then the the sonic movie 3 trailer i i'm gonna say that's a 10 out of 10 um because i that was like really cool i woke up on my own actually but i only slept for like three hours to watch the nintendo stuff and i i was tired i ate after i did the stream and then I, I stayed up for like an hour and then I went back to sleep for many more hours, you know? But I thought it was like, mm, the Nintendo stuff, like, I don't know if it was worth staying up for. Like, yeah, Castlevania, Tetris, um, Pizza Tower, like those stuff were really cool to see. Um, but otherwise, I could have just looked at it and like Twitter or something. But the uh, Sonic Movie 3 trailer, I thought that was worth waking up for, in my opinion. If you enjoyed this compilation, guys, be sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, play some Xenoblade, and I'll catch y'all next time for more. Peace, bye everyone.